Welcome to Interdependence Part 2. The standard, science standard that we're going to be working on is about describing how when the environment changes, there are differences between individuals, plants or animals, that allow some plants and animals to survive and reproduce while others die or move to new locations. Does this matter to me? Have you ever heard a mosquito flying around you but not been able to see it? Maybe you found it for a moment and swatted at it, but it avoided you and you lost it again. Mosquitoes have the ability to fly quickly and dart around so that it's hard for us to catch them. This is an adaptation that allows them to stay alive and not be eaten by predator birds. It is annoying to us, but life-saving to the mosquito. Have you noticed that some lizards blend right in with the leaves and rocks that they live in and around? What about insects? Have you ever seen a walking stick? A walking stick is an insect that looks just like what it sounds, a stick. These are examples of adaptations that make animals more likely to survive in their environment. Have you ever thought about what kinds of adaptations human beings have? How do we survive in our environment? What is an ecosystem? An ecosystem includes all the living and non-living things in a specific environment. As geographers study the many ecosystems around the world, many similarities or patterns become evident from one ecosystem to another. Within an ecosystem, each organism has a specific place that it calls home. This is the organism's habitat. For polar bears, habitats include areas around the North Pole, Greenland, and tundra. Habitats also provide the materials that organisms need to survive. These materials include food, water, shelter, oxygen, and other items that organisms need to live, grow, and reproduce. One of the largest habitats in Florida is the Everglades which is a wetland that, is used, that used to occupy most all of South Florida. As you can see from the table on the next page, environments can be very different. These environments are arranged in order from the least amount of precipitation to the greatest. You need to familiarize yourself with the different types of environments and the plants and animals that live in each. Up here we have the desert environment and that's what the desert may look like. It could be hot or cold in a desert, but the precipitation is always scarce to low. These are the types of plants you might find in a desert and these are the types of animals, lizards, snakes, rodents, spiders. Often the animals in a desert are nocturnal, meaning they are awake at night. Then you have the tundra, may look like this. It is extremely cold in the tundra. Notice there aren't any trees or plants. The precipitation is very low. Lichens, grasses, mosses grow there. You might find polar bears, wolves, foxes, and caribou in the tundra. The grassland, of course, as you may expect, has lots of grass. In Africa, it's called the savanna. It varies in temperature, has low to moderate rainfall. There are grasses and few to no trees, as you can see in the picture here. You may find antelope, buffalo, zebras, coyotes, elephants, and giraffes in the grasslands. Then we move to the rainforest. We're getting to areas that have more pre precipitation. That's an example of a rainforest. Typically, they're warm temperature, high precipitation. You might find palms, ferns, big leaf evergreens. Um, I think that's two different types of plants, big leaf plants and then evergreen, evergreens, because as you know, evergreens have needles. You'll find colorful birds, many insects, monkeys, snack, snakes, and bats. 
Then we have the wetland, like a marsh or a swamp or a river. It could be hot or cold. High precipitation. You can find grasses, mangrove trees like we find in the Florida Everglades, wild rice, cranberries. You'll find alligators, deer, a variety of birds and snakes. And then the last environment is an ocean environment. It could be hot or cold. Could have varied amounts of precipitation, but we know the role of the ocean in the water cycle. Uh, you could find seaweed, kelp, seagrass, and algae as plants in the ocean. And then, of course, you're probably pretty familiar with the different types of animals that live in the ocean. Environments are constantly changing. These changes can be caused by wind, water, plants, and animals, including humans, of course. Changes to an environment can be both positive and negative. Humans change the environment in many ways, like by planting or removing trees, or by building homes. Environments also change during the seasons. Some environments become very cold in winter, while others, like the ones found in Florida, have mild winters. Organisms react to changes in their environment by developing adaptations. Polar bears live in the tundra. This is a very cold environment with a lot of ice, snow, and minimal plant life. Polar bears have developed adaptations that allow them to survive in these polar regions. For example, a polar bear's thick layer of fat helps it stay warm in freezing temperatures. Can you think of any other physical characteristics or behaviors that enable po polar bears to survive in their habitat? I can think of quite a few. Uh, polar bears have very small ears, and the reason for that is so that there's less surface area to lose heat from. Um, they have very small tails as well, and that's the same reason, um, because they live in a cold area. They, they want to keep warm. They have uh, rough pads on their paws to help them not slip and slide on the ice. So all of these things kind of help them to survive. They, their claws help them to catch food and tear at their food so they're able to eat it. If living organisms do not adapt to an environment, they cannot survive. If all members of a particular kind of plant or animal die, the plant or animal becomes extinct.